This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Mobius's Batwing, Academy's USS Enterprise, Tamiya's latest big scale Corsair, and highlights from the vendor room at IPMS USA National Convention. New product rundown, proudly brought to you by HobbyCo, distributors of fine model kits from Italy, and by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go for science fiction and fantasy kits and accessories. Welcome to New Product Rundown, the show that lets you take a look at the latest kits and accessories. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We start today with Mobius's 125th scale Batwing. This is the latest incarnation of the Cape Crusaders aerial ride as seen in 2016's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The aircraft is seen on screen for only a few minutes in the movie and meets its end thanks to Doomsday. But that quick look was enough to show that the design borrows heavily from modern vertical takeoff and landing aircraft like the F-35. And packed a punch thanks to a pair of Gatlin guns up front and rockets in the belly. At 125th scale, it matches Mobius's previous release Batmobile from BVS, as well as AMT's Batwing from the Burton movies. Great for collections. It also means that the finished model is big, 17 inches long and wide. That means a lot of parts in the box. The boat-like body halves feature recessed panel lines and intakes, raised scoops, the center VTOL nozzle, and cockpit frame. That gives a good view of the flight deck with tub seat that will benefit from a harness, and instrument panel. The wedge-shaped canopy comes as a single clear piece. Landing light covers are also provided on the clear sprue. The fan for the VTOL engine can be exposed if the separate doors are posed open. Two engines at the back feature internal fan details and convincing ducting. They can be posed horizontal for in-flight or vertical for on the ground with the landing gear extended. Each of the massive wings is split into upper and lower halves and are marked by recessed panel lines, vents, and wing fences. The vertical stabilizers attached to fairings added to the upper halves. Optional parts of the wing roots allow the wings to be posed extended or folded. The lower roots contain weapons bays that can be modeled closed or open with rockets extended. The front wing with its integrated guns also feature optional parts for the wings up or down. The guns can be exposed or covered. No decals are provided to mark the Spartan craft, but the color instructions are pretty complete. No directions are given for the cockpit. Given its size and detail, Mobius's Batwing should be a blast to build. And it'll look great on your display shelf. Next to much older subject, CV-6, or USS Enterprise, from World War II and 1 700th scale. Despite participating in more actions against Japanese forces than any other U.S. Navy vessel. And receiving more battle stars. And surviving World War II. Enterprise has been the subject of just a few plastic kits, including Ravel's 1 490th scale offering from the 60s. Merritt International's 1 350th scale kit from a couple of years ago. And a waterline kit from Tamiya in 1 700th scale. Academy's all-new kit represents an early war enterprise and splits the hull of the water line with a red lower hull. The rudder, propeller shafts, and the propellers also come in red plastic. The remaining parts are gray, including the one-piece upper hull with recessed portholes and hatches, some with molded details, and raised plumbing, ladders, anti-magnetic mine degaussing cable, and a line marking the upper edge of the bootstripe. In addition to the flight deck with planks, catapults, and elevators, the kit features a pretty decent hangar deck with details molded on the floor. Unfortunately, it's hidden on the finished model. It would be possible to open some of the large doors on the side panels. The base of the island and the section of the hull under the front of the flight deck are molded as single parts with good surface detail. Plenty of decks and gunwells line the flight deck and island. The splinter shields are about as fine as they can be in this scale. Separate parts detail walkways and gun platforms along the flight deck. And there are separate parts for the underside of the flight deck fore and aft. Four identical sprues provide the elevators, several types of anti-aircraft guns, and the large air wing, which includes four each of F4F4 Wildcats, SBD3 Dauntlesses, and TBD1 Devastators. Each aircraft has propellers and decent landing gear. With careful cutting, it should be possible to fold the wings on the Wildcats and Devastators. Photo Etch Brass provides railings, ladders, and a replacement for the Styrene radar. A separate instruction sheet clearly shows locations for the parts. A terrific touch is the inclusion of pre-cut masks for the decks, you can spray everything deck blue, apply the masks, and spray 5N sea blue. Note the instructions incorrectly call for 5O ocean gray. Decal supply stripes and hangar outlines for the flight deck, national insignia for the aircraft, and English and Korean nameplates for the stand. All in all, this is a terrific kit that comes with some great extras and good detail. The Enterprise gets its due and there's plenty of opportunity to add extra detail. Our final kit today is Tamiya's third 132nd scale Corsair, the F4U-1D. Developed as a more powerful Corsair, the 1D had extra room for rockets and a second external tank. It was also the first version to operate consistently from U.S. carriers. 
to me accounts for those differences with new lower outer wing halves including larger metal sections and dedicated mounts for the rocket pylons. Also new are reinforced metal outer flaps and a new starboard inner flap with the kickstep. Other new parts include two fuel tank pylons, a fairing that fits behind the tail wheel well, some cockpit instruments and tanks, part of the propeller hub, and an optional short tail wheel strut. Another pair of new sprues provides prop blades with a wider cord near the base than the previous kit. Two 1,000 pound bombs in place of the 1A's 500 pounder, a pair of drop tanks, and eight rockets. The final new part is a sliding canopy section without the earlier version's straps across the top. The clear parts are super clear and include the gun sight, lights, dial glass, and the windshield armor. Outlined but not pre-cut masks are provided. The remainder of the kit is to me as terrific Corsair with fine panel lines and restrained rivets on the fuselage and wings. The latter includes a very realistic fabric effect molded on the outer sections. Optional parts allow the wings to be posed extended or folded. All of the control surfaces are separate, and the flaps and elevators have optional attachments to be posed neutral or drooped. Plenty of detail occupies the cockpit, including frames, seats, multi-part instrument panels, controls, and a pilot. The engine's cylinder banks, push rods, crankcase, and injection and exhaust manifolds can be displayed beneath the multi-part cowl's posable panels. Sharply molded main gear struts sandwich metal rods for reinforcement, and the main wheels are completed with rubber tires. A stand allows for in-flight display. Photo-etched metal supplies some structural details around the wing folds as well as a harness for the seat. Decals provide markings for two colorful all-sea blue Corsairs, one from VF-84 aboard USS Bunker Hill off Iwo Jima in February 1945, the other from VMF-351 on Okinawa in early 1945. Another winning Corsair from Tamiya. Tamiya was among the companies with new stuff to show at the IPMS USA National Convention in Omaha. Let's see what was there. Aaron, I mean Toto, I mean Aaron, I don't think we're in Wisconsin anymore. The newest item on Tamiya's table was a 148 scale M1A2 Abrams. The body parts show subtle non-skid texture and Lincoln length tracks finish the running gear. In addition to its next 148 scale Phantom, the Air Force F4CD, Zokimura showed early test shots of its upcoming Kawasaki KR45 Toru, Henschel HS129B, and FW190, all in 132nd scale. Finally, Ravel had sprues of an early test shot of its upcoming Super Hornet. The kit is labeled an E, but if I'm not mistaken, there are parts for the two-seat F on the sprues. Either way, it looks like there's a ton of detail in this, and it should be a welcome release for fans of modern jets. Looks like good fodder for future episodes in the new product rundown. Yeah, the vendor room at the IPMS USA National Convention is a great place to find deals as well as information about new kits. Look for reviews of the Batwing and Enterprise in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the September issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time. Welcome to New Product Rundown, the show that lets you take a quick look at... <coughs> hey, it's the plane.